Three months ago, the Committee on Commission Statutory Authority and State Enterprises chaired by the Bugweri Member of Parliament, Abdu Katun, to start the probe into the sale of the seven banks by Bank of Uganda. The probe started with the Tefe Bank that was closed in 1999 under the orders of the then Minister of Finance, Jawash Mayanja Nkanji, under the provision of the Bank Act of 1969. The committee discovered that the bank was closed illegally. Since the then Minister of Finance did not have orders to close it, as per the financial institution statute. Under that statute, the minister does not have powers to close a bank. It is actually Bank of Uganda. You remember the deputy governor told us the other time, you remember, that the FIS did not apply. The legal regime is the FIS. No, when when Bank of Uganda stayed the uh, activities of Tefe Trust in November, sorry, in uh, February 17th, Tefe Trust did not ever resume business after that because there were conditions for it to resume business, even though the letter talks of 30 days. There were certain conditions, and one of which was recapitalization. The fact that it was never done I believe is what informed the minister to give the directive. International Credit Bank that closed in 1998, Greenland Bank in 1999, and the Cooperative Bank in 1999 loans were sold using an agreement that recognizes the English law rather than the Ugandan law. Bank of Uganda signed an agreement with the Nile River Acquisition Company to buy the debts of the three banks worth 5.2 million US dollars, equivalent to 8.89 billion shillings. Bank of Uganda sold the loans at an abnormal discount of 93%. The company registered in Mauritius. And the most disturbing is that the agreement bears no names of those who signed. And he opted for a neutral place. There was a choice of a neutral place. Should there be a dispute as to what, whether we, what we sold and what we didn't sell and whatever? Okay. And you are saying the, the English law should apply. It does not make legal, neither does it make common sense. Nonetheless, Bank of Uganda went ahead and sold the National Bank of Commerce on phone in 2012. The committee revealed that the then executive director bank's provision, Justin Bajenda, sourced for buyers on phone and also made agreements through a phone call. As if that was not enough, Global Trust Bank was closed at 2 p.m. and sold off to DFCU Bank at 5 p.m. on the same day in 2014 under the orders of the then executive director bank's provision, Justin Bajenda. 2016 saw Crane Bank breathe its last of a failure to recapitalize. Whereas Crane Bank needed only $157 billion to recapitalize, Bank of Uganda injected $478 billion for liquidity support, which also failed to save the bank. Bank of Uganda failed to give accountability of how the money in question was appropriated and also how it failed to save the bank. What we would like to satisfy ourselves, though, is at the tail end in Crane Bank was this money utilized in accordance with the purpose for which it had been remitted. It is not in doubt that Crane Bank pumped in this, uh, sorry, Bank of Uganda did remit this money. That's not in doubt. Yes, this report which you referred us to, I've had the opportunity to read it, it does not answer that. I, I, what is your view? Does it? Is released for the vault of Crane Bank. Um, this is for liquidity support for customers to draw. Proceed. It should be remembered that this probe was triggered by the closure of Crane Bank in 2016, prompting the Auditor General to make a forensic audit of Bank of Uganda. The committee closed for Christmas holiday and will resume the probe into the closure of the seven banks on the 8th of January 2019. Susan Naonga reporting.